What's up everyone? It's great to see you guys. So today we are here for another book haul. I did promise you guys another book haul and I'm actually really behind on my book hauls because I just keep buying books. Uh, but I get a lot of good deals on them at the used bookstore. Sometimes I'll exchange old DVDs or old books. Um, but anyway, um, you should try to keep your book buying addiction under control. But we're not practicing what we preach today. Uh, so we're going to show you guys these books. I'll take them out of the bag here. Um, and I also have some, you know, uh, recently read slash book reviews that we're going to be coming out with pretty soon. Uh, just trying to finish up a couple of books. And then we'll talk, you know, next video we'll talk about the books that were either finished or close to finishing. Um, and also the books that we're still kind of immersed in. Uh, but I did just want to get this other book haul out to you guys. I'm a little bit behind because I've just been buying a lot of books. I have another stack over there I want to get to. But I think we'll just start with this one for now. Uh, so where do I want to start with this? Uh, make sure my camera's working here. All right, here we go. So here we have another beautiful Barnes & Noble's Classics edition of The Wings of the Dove by Henry James. I've mentioned um, the other... Henry James book that we bought called uh, Portrait of a Lady. Not too familiar with Henry James, but I did want to just get maybe just one more of his in my collection. Um, this one was just too beautiful to resist. Sounds like my phone's going off and it's bugging me. Uh, the only gripe with this one is like there's a little inconsistency running down the spine of the book, but it's not a bend or anything. Book is in beautiful condition. Uh, so just a little quick recap of what this is about. Uh, one of the three masterpieces from Henry James's final major phase, The Wings of the Dove, dramatizes the conflict between 19th century values and 20th, 20th century passions. Uh, born to wealth and privilege, Kate uh, Croy's mother threw it all away to marry a penniless opium addict. After her mother's death, Kate is offered an opportunity to return to the opulent lifestyle her mother, mother gave up on one condition that Kate renounces her love of the witty, good-looking, but poor Merton Densher. Uh, goes on to summarize a little bit more. Uh, so it seems like it's kind of a tragic, epic love story. Uh, sounds really interesting. So hopefully we'll be getting our eyes into some Henry James. I'm going to have to start taking on more books. I've realized at a time if I want to ever get through them. Uh, so up next we have a beautiful Oxford World Classics edition of uh, Chaucer and well, the author, yeah, Geoffrey Chaucer. Uh, the novel is called Trollia, tr uh, Trollos, and Crisade. Don't ask me to pronounce those properly. Uh, but this is sort of in the style of Romeo and Juliet, much older than that, um, I believe. Um, basically, uh, it's just a classic uh, love story, sort of maybe told in, it looks like it's like, yeah, just like a book. It's not like a play or anything. Uh, it's rather short. Uh, less than 150 pages, so I should be able to get through this at some point. Um, I do have another Chaucer book, The Canterbury Tales, which is right here, if I can find it. Not sure where it is at the moment. It might be down here. Yeah, it's right here. Uh, so The Canterbury Tales, I still have to get through this. This is like his classic, but it's really cool to have another Chaucer in my collection. Chaucer, Chaucer, not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, so we're going to be getting our eyes and ears into that at some point. Up next we have this beautiful brand new copy of a Hemingway biography. Uh, I just kind of skimmed the pages and it looks super interesting. Um, I had another Hemingway biography that I read about three or four years ago, but it was sort of told in the style of like um, biographical fiction. Like it just wasn't, it, it was a good read, but it just, this seems like much more like a traditional biography. Uh, so I'm not sure when we'll get to this, uh, but it's going to be great to have a really nice Hemingway biography written by Jeffrey Myers. Great picture of Hemingway there. Uh, let's see when this was published. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 1999, but by the looks of the book, it looks like it's barely been touched. Looks like my phone, my, my camera is not going to last here. Let me plug my camera in. Because it is dying as we speak. Uh, I'm so unprepared, guys. I'm sorry. I'm so unprepared. Uh, let me see if I can figure out where to plug this in here. 
Where does it go? Where does this plug in? Goes right in there. Let's make sure this is okay. I think we're in the clear here. It looks like it's charging. That's good. Uh, up next, we have William Blake, Selected Poetry. Uh, I've been trying to get some William Blake in my collection, um, and William Blake is also an artist. I'm not sure what this is about, uh, it just says Selected Poetry. Uh, titles like The Lamb, The Shepherd, Infinite Joy, and I, re I skimmed some of it. Um, and poetry is something I've definitely been lacking on, just haven't really had a lot of time. I shouldn't say time, but it really doesn't take that much time to read poetry, so I think I'm going to try to you know, start implementing a poetry book, maybe the last, you know, half an hour before I go to bed or something after I've read War and Peace or whatever. Um, and poetry is just a beautiful way to challenge yourself intellectually, spiritually, emotionally. Poetry doesn't come easily, obviously, but I think it's a really good endeavor. Um, it's something you should definitely try to do. Uh, up next that I'm very excited about, we have this beautiful Mozart biography by Maynard Sullivan. We mentioned Maynard Sullivan uh, a couple of months ago when we were talking about another Mozart biography that I haven't read yet. And I actually had a copy of this about two or three years ago, but it was really beat up. The spine was all messed up. This has a beautiful spine. Uh, this is a rather old book, but it's barely been touched and it's just gorgeous. Uh, this is a beautiful Mozart biography. I'm probably going to reread this again. It talks about, um, you know, how Mozart you know, kind of start writing his music, talks about his relationship with his father and Costanza, his wife, as well as how he wrote the Requiem Mask and maybe some a little bit about, um, you know, the mysterious findings and mysterious circumstances that were going on behind, uh, you know, the Requiem Mask. Who commissioned it? Who was the guy that wanted the res Requiem Mask, uh, Re Requiem Mass, um, you know, who was he writing it for? Uh, there's rumors that Mozart begun to believe that he was, you know, writing the, the Requiem for himself. Um, and just a very strange kind of life. Mozart had a very interesting life, um, but thank God we have his beautiful music to kind of keep us company. Um, and there's also some Freemasonic, uh, you know, connotations in this. Mozart supposedly was involved in the Freemasons. Uh, the Freemasons is everywhere. It's even in War and Peace. So if you guys don't know about the Freemasons and why it's, you know, such a conspiracy, it's because it's not a conspiracy. It's very true. It's very real, especially in the 1800s. Uh, so beautiful Mozart biography just called Mozart A Life. Uh, that's Maynard Solomon. He also wrote a beautiful biography of Ludwig von Beethoven that I want to get my hands on as well. So hopefully we'll be doing that. Uh, up next, something a little bit different. Uh, I bought a children's illustrated book about Rapunzel. Um, and I remember seeing this when I was a kid in school and Barnes and Nobles and stuff. Um, and this just has some beautiful illustrations. I was just immediately drawn to it. This just looks gorgeous. I'm really excited to explore this. Uh, just beautiful illustration, something to get inspired by. Um, and something I can keep for my future kids. Um, it would be amazing. Just really great stuff in here. Um, it just looks really, really beautiful. I mean, just look at that. Uh, you know, children's books are very, very inexpensive, especially if you get them used. Uh, so I'm very, very excited to get my eyes into this. Um, and maybe we'll do like a little YouTube read along. And I actually have an announcement that we're going to make. I want you guys to read something with me, uh, but we'll talk about that next video. Um, up next, we have another copy of Romeo and Juliet. We're going to add this to my Romeo and Juliet collection. I really like this one. It's a little more modern. I'm not. Let me check the the actual writing. Uh, it looks like the writing is still intact of the original, which is really good. Uh, you want to get as close to the primary source as you possibly can. Um, and I just really like this modern rendition. Uh, it's a little old, but it looks really beautiful. And they have actually got the whole series of Shakespeare plays in this edition. 
Uh, so this is now my third copy of Romeo and Juliet. I talked a little bit last time about how we're going to be collecting these and curating these. Um, so super cool. Excited about that. Up next we have Conquests and Cultures and in International History by Thomas Sowell. Um, and looks like something just fell out of there. That's so cool about used books. You never know what you're going to find. You might find like an envelope with a thousand dollars in there. Thomas Sowell is a sort of a historian, also a political commentator. He kind of leans more to the right. He's not like a the typical, um, you know, modern day woke scholar, I guess you could say. He is African American, which is really cool. So I'm really excited to hear what he has to say about the history of slavery, as well as, um, you know, conquests and cultures. He documents the history of British, Africa, Eastern Europe. Uh, so it sounds like it's going to be really, really cool. I might try to start reading this very soon. Uh, let's just see what these little cards are here. Just a couple of index cards. Maybe we can use these for something. Very cool. Uh, so last but not least, we have a fantasy novel. It's a little bit different than what I would normally get, but I've seen this book several times uh, at the bookstore, and it's just beautiful, and for some reason just kind of, you know, grabbed me today leapt off of the shelf and I ended up putting it back and then I kind of walked back over there and I'm like, let me just get this fantasy novel. It's called Paladin of Souls, a novel. Look at that beautiful illustration uh, by Lewis or Lois McMaster Bujold. Uh, apparently she's a pretty uh, prestigious fantasy author so I'm excited to get my eyes into this. I might start this pretty soon just to kind of um, you know, mix it up a little bit. I've been reading a lot of serious novels and serious, you know, books, you know, religious texts, philosophy, you know, 18th century novels. Um, so it's going to be cool to kind of get something a little more easy going. I'm not saying this is going to be an easy read. It is pretty dense, uh, but it's not too long. It's only like, it's less than 500 pages. I could probably maybe finish this in a month or two. Uh, so I'm not going to read the whole synopsis of what this is about because it's pretty lengthy. Uh, but it's basically just a fantasy novel. So I will definitely keep you guys updated on this if we decide to read this soon. Um, and I think we're going to try to curate a late winter uh, spring into summer reading list. That way we can kind of keep ourselves in check. Uh, but I've definitely, you know, swimming in books and I've got, you know, definitely bit off way more than I can chew but I'm definitely going to start introducing more texts. And like I said, next video, we're going to talk about uh, some of the, my responses to some of the books that we've been reading, as well as the books that we're kind of immersed in. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at Andrew Marlow Artist Official, or send me an email at andrewmarlow22 at gmail.com. We can talk about books or maybe my older videos about body positivity, whatever resonates with you guys and gals. I look forward to hearing from you. Make sure you guys subscribe and please share this video, like this video, and we'll see you guys very soon.